But I'm thinking about the big questions, as I know many of you are. What's the goal of education? Why are we here? For society, for teachers, for students. How do we teach for the future? Because after all, that's where our students are going to live. And what should we teach? Not just how. And those are the big questions that you're all thinking about, and that's really a good thing to be doing. Here's my perspective. I think that we hugely, and when I say we, I mean we as a society, we hugely underestimate what our young people are capable of. And you just saw some of the things that they are capable of. We hugely underestimate how much technology that's come at us has the power to help our students and help us. We often see the negative side, we underestimate the positive side. And lastly, I think we underestimate what an education could and should be. And that's another reason why I'm so happy to be here, because you are all thinking about what an education, a good education, a, the best education could and should look like and be. Now, I've been forewarned that there's all kinds of opinions in the world and I know that you're in Colorado and I've been to Boulder so I know that there's a lot of opinions in the world but let me be very clear about my opinion about teachers because I don't want there to be any mistakes about this teachers don't go away because of technology let's be real clear that we don't do that but our role changes. And that's really what's going on and I'm going to talk to you about it today. The role of the human teacher in the future, in my view, is to give students incredibly important things that they can't get from technology. What are those incredibly important things? Listening. Technology doesn't listen to you very well. And it doesn't motivate you. It doesn't respect you, it doesn't empathize with you, and it doesn't encourage your passions. That's a human job. And the reason we do that job is so our kids can do what the kids talked about who were up here on the stage earlier, teach themselves. But they need our help. They need our motivation. They need our respect and empathy and passion. And so if you want to associate any words with Prensky, those are the four that I would pick. Now, some of you may have heard a parent or two say these words. Don't experiment with my kid. And I've heard it from a lot of people, some of whom I thought might know better. And what I say to these people is this. Sorry, we have to experiment. Responsibly, of course. But we have to experiment because we live in a new worldwide context. And that context is very, very different from the one that most of us grew up in. And that's really what I'm here to talk about this morning, is that context and how it affects us and what we do. The problem is that that has happened very rapidly, and we don't know yet how to prepare our young people, or even ourselves in many cases, for this new context. So we have to try and experiment. We are all living, in fact, in a huge worldwide experiment. This is not just Colorado. This is not just the U.S. This is everywhere in the world to define education in the world of a future that has a brand new context. And what is that context? It's got four components that I'm going to talk about today. It may have more. First is VUCA. I don't know if you've heard of VUCA, but VUCA is becoming an important term in the military planning, in business planning, because it describes our environment of volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. And all of those are increased. Volatility, half of the most turbulent financial quarters of the past 30 years have occurred since 2002. 
in the last 10 or 12 years. And you can just see what volatility means on that graph. That happens to be milk prices up and down and up and down and up and down in ways that are not easy to deal with. In terms of uncertainty, it's really amazing. I had a teacher, a scientist, who Skypes into classrooms, mostly elementary school classrooms, to talk about science. I met this man on Skype. And I asked them a question. I said, well, when you go into these elementary school classrooms, what's the message you want to deliver to the kids? And his answer really blew me away. I was very surprised because here's what he said. Everything I'm about to tell you, kids, is wrong. And what does he mean by that? I'm not lying to you. I'm saying that's the best we know today. But things are changing so quickly and not just in science, but in all fields, that by the time you grow up, maybe by the time you get out of school, the truth that we know will be different. The things that we knew about all aspects of science when I went to school 50 years ago are really very different now. So we have to keep that perspective, and our kids have to have it, that we can only do the best we can and look at everything from the perspective and with the tools that we can, but we can't expect it to all be right. In terms of complexity, sure we're doing bigger projects and we're going to the stars and the planets, but mostly we have more people. We have more. When I grew up there were less than three billion people in the world, now there are more than eight. That's a huge, huge difference and it makes things much more complex and as the kids all told us yesterday more stressful and in terms of ambiguity now we have new words we have to make up words like frenemy and competition to describe the situation where things are not exactly what they seem they can be one or the other but wait there's more we have, in addition to VUCA, a situation of accelerating change in the world. And here the emphasis is not on the change. We all know that's happening. It's on the accelerating. Because accelerating change doesn't mean faster change. It means faster and faster and faster and faster change. And that is something humans have never dealt with before. It took almost a decade to decipher the first human genome you can get yours deciphered in an hour. And that's what's happening. Things that used to take years take minutes. And things that used to take days take nanoseconds. And we're having to get used to the speed of evolution. I read almost every day in the paper about some new scientific discovery, in this case I remember DNA of dinosaurs, and they say, we couldn't even do this even a year ago. It's moving that quickly that every year we can do huge numbers of new things. But wait, there's more. We now have extended brains. You know, we used to have just the left brain and then we added the right brain, and now we have technology extending our brains all over the place in every single way. We can do much more than we could before. We can deal with trillions of data points. We can predict things. We can simulate things. I wrote a whole book about this called Brain Gain, Quest for Digital Wisdom, if you're interested in finding out. But wait, there's more because it's a globe that's increasingly networked. And the network, the network, the internet, changes everything. Everything. It changes relations and families and health and work and finding work and doing work and getting educated. All of that is changing dramatically because of the internet and the network. And we have to learn to what to do with this whole new context.